great. So we'll go how to grow carrots. So there are a few, oops, there we go. There are a few assumptions that I have um, when I do any of these talks. And usually there are four vegetable growers, but um, I assume that you have a garden spot either in mind or in real out reality. Um, they're taking, um, taking a spot. The, um, and then that you will take a soil test and then adjust your nutrients accordingly. Because sometimes you may need some nutrients and sometimes you may not. But we'll talk about what, what carrots need nutrient-wise as we go along. So those are the, the two assumptions. Um, if you haven't taken a soil test, you can take it to your local county extension office and they will be happy to um, take, that, take that soil for you and do um, great things with it and tell you what to do. So where to plant. There are lots of places you can plant carrots. The thing is you kind of want a deep soil. You can plant them in raised beds where you have a, a greatly amended soil with compost and peat moss and cow manure and all of those other things. Um, and they work really well if you have a square foot garden. Um, there are 16 carrots to a square because they're usually on two to three inch centers. We'll talk about how the spacing in a little bit, but they work really well um, with carrots in a square foot garden. You can grow them in a pot, in a container. You just want to make sure that your container is about 10 or 12 inches deep because if you get those really long carrot seeds, you're going to want them not to break at the bottom. And this square foot garden here has a, not square foot garden, this raised bed with the irrigation because carrots do need a little bit of water, um, look really, really nice, especially they planted them in really nice rows. So you can plant carrots just about anywhere. They're a little hard to grow in our clayey soils, but there are some varieties that you can grow if you don't have a really good amended soil or if you're just starting out, but we'll get you there too. Okay. Containers, they need to at least be 24 inches by 36 inches by 10 inches. Eh, they don't have to be that wide or that long, but they need at least to be 10 inches deep. Um, a good container mix is compost. Core could be perlite, I'm sorry, core can be peat moss. Core is that brown outer husk that they use um, for, um, of the coconut. They use that as a, as a potting mix. Um, perlite will get will lighten that up a little bit. And you have to use a balanced fertilizer when you're working with containers. Um, usually a, a balanced fertilizer would be a 20-20-20, a triple 19, a 444. You just need to put a little bit more on there if it's fours. Um, but they, the, the compost core and perlite don't have enough nutrients in it for a lot of plants and especially carrots. So make sure that you feed them. And I like a slow release fertilizer that I put on once a month if I've got a container. The other container that you can use is called a grow bag. These work really well. The only issue is that you need to make sure that you water them a little bit more um, frequently than you do a container that's maybe plastic or wood because that outside edge of the grow bag is fabric and it breathes, so it dries out a little faster. But carrots do really well in grow bags. And the cool thing about grow bags or, or pots is that when you wanna harvest your carrots, you just dump them out, sort through the soil and put the soil back in there. And then you have pretty clean carrots. Uh, potting mix is not uh, very dirty and it's easy to wash off those carrots. So we got where to plant them. When to plant them. Carrots are a cool season crop. So we wanna plant them um, in early spring. Now I'm in the middle part of the state. So according to our home vegetable gardening guide in Kentucky, we can plant them about March the 20th, which is in a couple of weeks, which seems weird. Um, but you can plant them that early and you can plant them the latest is July 15th. So if you are in the Western part of the state, you can add a week to March 20th. So you can back it up a week to, um, let's see, March the 13th, or you can, if you're in the eastern part of the state, you need to go a little later and maybe you're in the last week of March. Um, and the same for the latest. We can plant July 15th. If you're going to be in the western part of the state, you got a little longer season, you can go back to maybe the 20th or the 21st. And if you're in the eastern part, you need to back that up to like the 7th. 
<clears throat> because carrots are not a fruiting crop, they don't have like a flower with a fruit, they will tolerate some partial shade. So you're looking at about at least six hours of sun a day. They really like more, but it'll just take longer for your carrots to become edible or big enough to eat if they're in some partial shade. But carrot tops look really pretty in the garden too. So if you have a little bit of partial shade, that's great. Um, they like a one and a half to three inch spacing. So we'll, we'll kind of talk about that. And if you, if you would like to have a continuous harvest, you can plant at three week intervals because I don't know about you, but then I know what the next slide is, but when you space them out that way, you, you can you know plant part of your row every three weeks. And then that way all your carrots don't come in at the same time. Because, you know, they, although they do, we'll talk about saving them and uh, storing them, but that's a lot of carrots to eat. So, all right. Do you know how many seeds are in a packet of carrot seeds? If you would like to type your answer in the uh, chat box, I'll, I'll take, I'll, I'll entertain some notions, or if you want to unmute yourself. Somebody said 20, 60. Now we're talking about carrot seeds. Somebody said 1,400, 100, awesome. Well, somebody actually read the PowerPoint beforehand because it is 1,400. That's just a packet. That's not even an ounce of seeds. There's a lot of seeds. So if you plant your whole packet, you're gonna, you're gonna have a lot of carrots. Either you're gonna have to thin your carrots or you're gonna have a lot of carrots to eat later on. So, um, but yeah, 1,400 seeds is a lot. Um, so maybe planting them every three weeks and just planting, you know, 20 or 30 at a time would be a good idea. And we'll kind of, we'll, we'll, I'll circle back to, to saving those seeds a little bit too. So, but how much do you need to, do you need to plant? You don't need 1,400 carrots coming in all at one time, unless you're a truck farmer and you, you need to take those to market. Um, so on average, if you're gonna eat them fresh and you're one person that likes carrots, you wanna plant a five to 10 foot row spaced three inches apart, which is about 15 to 40 carrots. Now I would probably break that down into three or four sections because I can't eat 15 carrots in a week. <laughs> so I might eat two or three, maybe five, uh, maybe put some in some stews and some soups, um, but that way you can eat them fresh. If you're gonna preserve them, you can take 10 to 15, feet per row. This is per person, by the way. So if you have two or three people that like to eat carrots, you need to multiply that by how many people you have. So if you're going to preserve them or kind of keep them for um, the winter, you want to kind of make 40 to 60 plants is what you're looking at. Um, and preserve, you can freeze them and you can definitely um, just store them in a cool dry place, but we'll get to to that in a little bit, but that's what I mean by preserve. Keep them, you know, just not pluck them out of the ground and eat them right there. Although you can do that, they're pretty tasty. Whoops, come on. So we, we're gonna talk about varieties and there's not just orange carrots anymore. Um, there, used to, there used to be a lot of varieties, but um, I'll tell you why we got the orange carrots. Um, back when England was very much a powerful country, and that's to say they aren't now, but this was like in the 15, 1600s there was the Duke of Orange and they wanted to curry favor with the um, Duke of Orange. And so they started breeding orange carrots. Not that orange carrots don't have a lot of vitamin C and beta carotene, they do, but we used to have hundreds of different varieties and colors of carrots. And we're kind of getting started back to that um, for that. So we're gonna talk about some, some great varieties that are out there. And this is a great place to experiment. So you may go out to the seed store and find Danvers Half Long, which are really good, basic. It's one we recommend. Um, it's a good six to eight inch carrot. It's very uh, cylindrical as opposed to pointy. Um, and it does a pretty good job of growing in our heavier clay soils. Um, it, it's pretty, uh, pretty easy to grow. Um, it's, it's one of those medium carrots. It's not a really short one. It's not a really long one. Um, it, but it has a good orange color, has a very sweet flavor, um, and it's good for a lot of things. Um, Scarlet Nantes is usually a very bright orange. It has great flavor. 
it's nearly coreless. So, you know, if you've chopped through a carrot and you see that big old core in the middle, this one doesn't have that, that problem. Um, it's good to pick early for baby carrots. Um, it's one of those that um, grows to about seven inches long. It's widely adapted. It'll grow uh, probably across the country and that's why it's very popular and it stores well. And it's about a 60 to 75 day carrot. So if you think from planting to harvest is about 65 to 75 days, that's what you're looking for with a scarlet mantis. Now here's one of my favorite ones. If I can get there, okay. Um, this is deep purple, which is a very gorgeous color. That dark purple root with, it does have a core, it's lighter color, but it's fine. They're seven to eight inches long and they're tapered with a very sweet flavor, similar to purple haze. That's the other purple one that's not quite as purple. Um, but the color fades when it's cooked. So this would be great in a fresh salad. Um, can you imagine grating that into a carrot and raisin salad? That'd be very pretty. Um, very tall. So you, not that you have to stake these or, you know, prop them up, but they have pretty strong, healthy tops. Um, it's an imperator type, imperator, imperator type, which means that it's long and cylindrical. Um, and you can find this out in the garden centers also or seed catalogs has a lot of these um, for, for, for growing. Um, this one is Yellow Sun. This one's a little shorter and a little stubbier. Um, it does have a very sweet flavor, but it has that yellow color, which doesn't change when it's cooked. Um, I don't have any other notes on the Yellow Sun for there, but that's a pretty color. Um, there's a red carrot called Nutra Red. Um, it's more of a corally red. But these are nine inch carrots. So if you're going to grow these, you need to have a very deep raised bed. These do really well in um, pots. Um, they're, the cool thing about these is that when you cook them, the color deepens as opposed to going away and it improves the texture. So this one might not be a good um, raw eating vegetable. It says it's great for stews and vegetable dishes, um, medium to small top. So it's going to be a little shorter. Um, and a packet is 75 seeds in this one. Um, it averages about 285,800 seeds per pound. It's a lot of seed. Um, but yeah, this uh, Nutra Red is, um, would be good in stews and vegetable dishes, something where you would cook it to, to get that texture. It may be a little stringy if you eat it raw. White Satin is a pure white root. Um, it has a crisp, sweet flavor, and they're about eight to nine inches long. And it's adaptable to difficult growing to conditions. And this one is also very, has very tall tops. Um, so you're looking at probably 12 to 14 inches of green on the top to get your carrot at the bottom. Um, this one was fairly new a couple of years ago. So I'm, I'm looking forward to trying this one out. Um, Atlas, this one is called a small round Parisian market type. The one that we probably think of in this shape is Thumbelina which was the first one that we had um, that was this round um, carrot. Um, it's about, this atlas is about one and a half to two inches in diameter. Um, it's a great, if you've got a shallow soil everywhere in Kentucky, um, if you don't have a raised bed or a, a container you can plant these in, these little atlas ones are good. They have good flavor, they have short tops. Um, if you like these rounded um, roots, Make sure you give them even moisture. If you let them kind of get dry, the, the roots will elongate a little bit because they're looking for water. Um, remember, we're eating the roots of these plants. Here's Petite Sweet. Um, it's very small and very sweet. Um, they, they're only three and a half inches long and about three quarters of an inch in diameter, but it's uniformly thick. So it kind of looks like a sausage. Um, but it's um, smooth, it's thin skinned and small cord. So you're gonna get that really good crunch and that very sweet carrot flavor. Um, if these weren't so short, they'd probably be good in a, a carrot cake. Um, red cord ch 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 chantonet, sorry. It's one of the sweetest carrots that we know. It was introduced in 1929 and you can still find it, it's amazing. Um, this is called a stump rooted carrot with a deep red orange center. Um, this one is good for juicing or for fresh eating. Um, so it's going to have that good juicy carrot taste where sometimes you get a carrot and you're like, this is kind of dry. Um, and that might be from your baby carrot selections at the grocery store. Um, but yeah, I would try these over those little baby carrots at the store. 
um, very juicy. And they they tend to have that great taper um, of, a, of, a, of a carrot, the carrot, the essence of a carrot, but short. So grow back to growing. We talked about our varieties. Critical watering periods are establishment. So as soon as you put those seeds in the ground, you need to kind of get them watered in. And as they start to grow, that'd be fine. They can dry out a little bit because you want those roots to go in. But as soon as that root starts to enlarge, that's the other time that you do not want to short them on water. You don't want to overwater them because then we get into some root rot issues. Um, but you do need to make sure that they have water at least the, at those two periods of time as they're growing. Okay, thinning. So if you planted your carrots in a row or sometimes people make like little tapes on paper or wherever to get them spaced. If you just didn't get them quite spaced out enough, um, you wanna thin the plants to three inches when they're about, oh, a finger's width tall. And that's about three fingers width. Um, I always try to, I hate to take a ruler to the garden because it's brown and I lose it. So I try to figure out what's three, you know, three inches and that's about the width of three fingers. So I hate to say it, pluck them out in between those, <laughs> those plants um, and you'll get a nice bigger juicier more flavorful carrot that way they don't have to compete for nutrients and water speaking of nutrients um, fertilization hey remember one of the assumptions is I that you were going to take a soil test well hopefully you filed that soil test and you have bring brought that uh, nutrients up to the recommendations sometimes we recommend not fertilizing for a while that's okay but carrots are pretty low nutrient needing and they don't need a side dressing of nitrogen because we're really wanting those really thick nice textured roots um and really nitrogen tends to go towards the to the uh, leaves and not to the root systems so if you've got if your soil test says don't add fertilizer don't add any and you don't need to side dress insects oh now we're into the pest problems well you might get some aphids on there um, my first reaction, if I have aphids, and you can tell this is an aphid because it has two little tailpipes at the end. And those, those little dots are not antennae on the back. Those are um, recycled um, plant sap that the, that the insect has eaten. And that's what's that sticky honeydew. So if you find that your leaves are a little sticky, you might look for these little bugs. They don't necessarily have to be yellow. They can be the same color as the leaf. They can be this limey green. They can be dark black or gray. Um, sometimes they're pink. So if you have aphids, the best thing to do, A, is to spray them off with a hose of water. Because once they get knocked off, they're not, more, they're not likely to get back on the plant. And then just insecticidal soap will usually take care of these because it gives them a bad case of dishpan hands. So it cracks open their exoskeleton and they dry out. I know that sounds gross, but they're insects, it's okay. Um, so aphids might be a problem. None of these insects are gonna be a huge problem for any, um, any carrot growers out there. You might see some cutworms, especially if this is a newer garden. Um, and cutworms do that. They just, they literally just eat through the stem of the plant. And then you'll see the stem laying on the ground. You're like, what ate that? If it was a rabbit, the stem would be gone because the rabbit would have eaten the stem. But if that stem is still there, this is the cutworm. And you can usually dig around in the soil somewhere nearby and find it. They, they usually only have enough energy to eat one plant in an evening or a night. And then they dig back in and hide during the day. So if you start to see some of these kind of falling over, look for a cutworm. And the easiest thing about that is you can just dig it up, throw it in the grass, because I am sure some entrepreneuring bird will go find it and eat it because they're nice and juicy. Um, so there's no sprays for cutworms. You don't need them. Flea beetles, I haven't really seen them on carrots, but they do make these little teeny tiny holes on um, the, your plant leaves. Um, but you may not see those little bugs because they are tiny. They're the, they're the size of fleas. Um, and usually insecticidal soap may or may not catch them because you have to actually spray the insect with it but they won't do that much damage. And by the time your carrots are ready to pull, they'll be gone. So I wouldn't worry about flea beetles too much. Although I haven't seen flea beetles on carrots in a really long time. The one I would probably look out for would be root maggots. And you, unfortunately you won't see these. Um, there's called a, there's a carrot fly 
that lays an egg on your carrot and then it hatches and it makes these little runnels in your carrot root. Um, not a big deal in Kentucky. Um, I would just pull these up and throw them away. Um, or you can eat the bottom part of the carrot, but I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't eat this part. Um, the bottom will still be good, but that's, that's fairly rare. I've never, I've never had somebody bring me a carrot and go, oh, that's root maggots, no problem. Um, but that's, you know, that's something you might see. And if you do see something on your garden, take it to your extension service. Um, they usually have somebody there that will be able to identify that and tell you how to take care of that. And if you have a lot of organic matter, um, you might see some of these sow bugs or pill bugs or roly polies. Um, they really like to eat the decaying plant matter, but sometimes they get confused and they can actually eat the tops of your carrots or a strawberry or something that's kind of soft. I would probably pull um, some of the mulch or things away from the tops of the carrots just to give you a little space so you don't get sow bugs. They're usually more of a problem in wetter, wetter weather than we have right now, but there's not really a good control for them. Diseases? Well, my little person here is scratching his head because I have never seen a disease on a carrot. And if you have, I would like to meet you. Um, we just, I haven't seen any in Kentucky. So I'm not gonna talk about diseases. So everything's gone well, we've got carrots to, to pull. So we're gonna harvest them. It's really easy when they get to the size that you want them to be, you pull them out of the ground and you wash them and you eat them. That's pretty much how you harvest carrots. You can take them and you know put them into pretty bunches or you can just put them in a box. That's what I do. And, um, and eat them, clean them off a little bit. Usually just spraying off at the end of the hose works really well. So when we do, um, oh, there is a question. How do you, how can you tell when they're right size to pull? Usually on the package, it will tell you what the diameter of the carrot is supposed to be. Like we talked about three quarters of an inch or an inch and a half or whatever for that particular variety. And when they get to about that size, you can pull a couple and see if they're big enough for you. They will continue to grow even after you've left them there for a while. And if you forget to pull them in the winter time, they will overwinter and they will flower the next year. And their flowers will look like Queen Anne's lace. Um, but I wouldn't recommend doing that because they get kind of woody over the winter time. But you can definitely, you know, kind of gauge on from the package size. Good question, Katie. Thank you. Storage. You definitely want to wash the roots. You want to get as much of that soil off of the carrot as you can. You don't necessarily have to scrub them, but just rinsing them off will be okay. If you're going to store them in your refrigerator, you want to trim the tops to about a half an inch. Um, and in perforated plastic bags, now this is in this is an Amy's perfect world where you have perforated plastic bags. Um, you could also store them in a plastic bag that's not zipped or closed. Um, and you can store them in the refrigerator, usually in the limper drawer. Oh, I'm sorry, normal people call it the crisper drawer, but my vegetables never get more crisp in that drawer. Um, but if you have a cold moist cellar or a root cellar, that would be also a good place to store them. Um, but don't store them with your apples because apples give off ethylene, a lot of ethylene, and that can cause your um, carrots to really um, degrade faster with the ethylene in there. So make sure that they're not stored with ethylene um, or apples. Um, and, in a, and usually at about 40 degrees, they will last for a fairly long time, especially some of those storage carrots that we talked about, varieties that are meant to be stored. They will store for um, three to four months. In a good refrigerator, but they have to be kind of moist to do that. If you get a fresh eating carrot that you want to store, they could store in the refrigerator for a couple, well, probably a month or so, but the juiciness of that fresh carrot will cause it to uh, decline fairly quickly. The storage carrots are a little bit drier, they're a little bit more tough, um, and they'll kind of sweeten a little bit with age for that. <clears throat> 